At you with a camera? At her? Me. Stand by. Coming in five, four, three, two, one. You're off. Hi, Cassidy Hill here with Javier Arenas today, a cornerback and punt return specialist for the Kansas City Chiefs, but more importantly, some would argue, a veteran of the 2009 National Championship Alabama Crimson Tide football team. Um, Javi, thank you for coming today. Absolutely. Uh, first, I want to talk a little bit about that National Championship game. We all kind of know the stats, know the score, know how it ended up, but we don't really know what it felt like to be there. Um, if you could, I just want you to take us to that halftime locker room. The first half is over, McCoy is out, you just intercepted a pass, Darius has intercepted a pass. What is that locker room like? like what is the atmosphere? What is Coach Saban saying? It, the locker room, the atmosphere was like it was, you know, uh, all year. We never, we never were satisfied. Um, we never wanted to lay off in the second half and, and get them potential to come back, you know. So uh, even though we were up, our feelings, was like we were down, you know. We wanted to uh, create the biggest cushion we can, you know, between us and them, um, so they wouldn't get comfortable at all and, and come back. So we, we still had our mind on grinding and trying to finish up, so we can so we could conclude the season, you know, with the, with the championship. I mean, after that game, obviously in the second half, Texas did make a substantial comeback, but in the end, Alabama won out. After that game, could you just breathe a sigh of relief that it was all over, or was it somewhat sad? And I, you you don't breathe a sigh of relief. You breathe a sigh of relief if you beat you know LSU or Auburn <laughs> in the regular season, you know, because yeah. you celebrate for a second, then you know you got to go back to work. So you get that that, mm -hmm. that little intermission point to where you can you can be like, all right, we did it. But now we were still our energy level went you know up even higher after the game was over because that started a. That's a lifetime achievement, you know. Right. That's what kids dream of and things like that. So, and we had accomplished that. So, it wasn't a sigh of relief. It was a, a feel of accomplishment um, from uh, each player on the on the team because everybody contributed, you know. So, and being a captain on the team at the time, you know, I felt like uh, me, you know, guys like Rolando and Mike Mike Johnson was uh, front runners, uh, and we were leaders on the team. So, it felt it felt that much greater, you know. Um. Speaking of being the captain on the team, you now have your handprints like forever there outside of Denny Chimes. Mm -hmm. Something along with that, with and then you currently hold the record for punt return touchdowns, right? Yeah. With seven, I believe. Mm -hmm. What are you most proud of for what you did at Bama in your years here? You know, just overcoming a lot of adversity. I wasn't even supposed to be here in the first place. They told me I was too small. I was a late, mm -hmm. I was a late signee. Um, you know, so I had to grind my way to get to where I wanted to be, and it's exactly what I did. And it, you know, it felt great. It was, but I never, I never settled. You know, at any point, you know, when I returned two kicks my freshman year, I never was like, I, right, I did a lot. You know, so that's, I'm good. I can relax. You know, I always, I never reach a, I never reach the top as how I see it. You know, and and that makes me uh, feel great as a person. You know, I don't need anything else to, to help boost me. I don't need any performance enhancement. I don't need people telling me how good I am. I just do it myself and and, and to be a leader and be this small little guy mm -hmm. and the leader of all guys like Mark Ingram and, and uh, Marcel Darius. And I say leader, I mean just a team captain, you know. Right. It felt real good. That is something special. Now going into a little bit of the Kansas City Chiefs, um, you're there with Brody Kroll, correct? Yeah. He ne you never played with him in Alabama, if I'm right. Nah, that he did. was already gone. Right? Mm -hmm. Once you're there, is he sort of just like another one of the NFL players on the team with you, or is there any sort of Bama camaraderie between the two of you? you know, I, I want to say it's some um, some Bama camaraderie, but it's not because in the NFL, it's every man for himself. Right. You gotta you gotta feed your family. Um, you know, so if I get cut, you know, Brody's not supposed to feel sorry for me. Brody has to continue to go on and, and do what he do, you know, and, and vice versa. So. You know, I, I see Brody and guys like Wallace Gilbert and uh, Bobby Greenwood, you know, and, you know, I know those are my former teammates and they're my teammates now, but at the same time, I got to go get mine and they got to do the same thing. And that's the difference between, you know, the collegiate level and the NFL. It's, it's every man for themselves and uh, you can't, I don't want to say you can't get too close to someone because that the, one day the guy might be next to you and the next day his locker cleaned out and if you created a bond with him, then, you know, you got you to struggle to overcome. Is it still a little hard to form these relationships with the lockout? Um, you know, yeah, it, it is because 
everybody's separated, you know, and um, you're doing your own thing. The only type of relationship that you really have is calling the guys and asking them how hard they've been working and what they've been doing just to get some ideas to what you want to do. But, like, I haven't seen any of my teammates, uh, you know, since, since January. Well, we wish you all the best, Bobby, and thank you so much for coming today. Oh, my pleasure. Y'all have a great day.